pace has really slowed the last couple of days because of my epoxy sensitivity. I have taken the last two days off from any grinding or handling epoxy. So today we're trying to make a push and get the um, skins on the starboard side all tied in. And then we'll see. The last few days have been misery for me, with days spent in a drowsy Benadryl haze and nighttime sleep punctuated with bouts of intense burning and itching caused by the epoxy. No matter how well I protected myself, any work with an epoxy product such as this fairing compound caused irritation and now my skin seems hypersensitive to other irritants, such as fiberglass particles. Knowing this, I wore as much protection as possible for grinding fiberglass in order to bevel the seams to prepare for tying the remaining skins into the deck. While I was giving my irritations a rest, Lee carried on by himself and worked on filling holes on the deck. The strange reddish color of the hardener is old hardener that we had stored on board and decided to use up. According to West system, it is normal for stored hardener to become reddish and does not affect its efficacy. And take it from me, Lee should be wearing gloves on both hands. Blondie hung out with me down below, and I attacked the dirt and dust that accumulates so quickly in the boatyard. My painter's scraper tool comes in handy for more than just painting. For our last chore this week, I cut the fiberglass strips and mixed epoxy while double gloved. Lee applied epoxy and rolled on the strips to finish tying in the five remaining skins to the deck proper. Now the deck is safe from any damp weather and we are heading to California for the memorial of my closest friend and who made a trip to Wymus with me way back in episode 8. Over the course of the past few weeks I had noticed some peeling of the bottom paint and what appeared to be little blisters, especially apparent in the slant of morning light. Alejandro, who also first appeared in episode 8, came and ground away an area of bottom paint where the blisters were located. There were multiple layers of paint and when finally reaching the gel coat, he used a moisture meter, which indicated a dry subsurface. What I had feared were blisters in the fiberglass was actually caused by moisture drying within the layers of paint and causing the paint to bubble. While we are gone, Alejandro will be grinding off the paint to the gel coat Join us next week for more news. So, until then!